Welcome back to Mr. Silly P Teaches Mrs. Silly P Farming Simulator 22. For episode 4, we have moved to Bally Spring. Come along with me, Mr. Silly P. Hello, Mr. Silly P. Hello, Mr. Silly P. How are you? Good day to you. Top of the morning. Yeah, top of the morning. We're in Ireland, people. We've moved to Bally Spring, like we said we were going to. Hooray. It's I'm all really very happy. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It's all very exciting. There's just so much stuff we're going to be able to do on here. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Um, what, what I have done, I've spent a bit of time setting ourselves up. Uh, the McConnons farm, they've got their farm. They've got a cow farm a little bit further on the road from us. And as I said in the last episode, um, a couple of people messaged actually um, saying it was a bit stereotypical to, to use the, the name McConnon, almost like using O'Shea or O'Shaughnessy or it was very Irish. The, Ma the McConnons are people we know. <laughs> they're our neighbours. They are Irish. <laughs> they're, yes. <laughs> they're real. They're real people. They're actual people. It wasn't just us being, you know, stereotypically racist or anything. They're, they're actual people. Right. We love them. Um, so yeah, people. the McConnons are lovely people. Um, so yeah, yeah, so so Mix retired. The McConnons have asked us to come and, and tenant farm. The money we got top right. That's the money we'd earned on per beck, or we had on per beck. Mississippi had 112,000, I had 99 thereabouts. So that's what we've got. We've combined our bank account, so Miss P can't stitch me up anymore. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Silly P needs to get over himself a little bit, doesn't he? You know, yeah, he uh, probably. <laughs> but um, what we're going to do is we're going to head down to the farm because you haven't seen it yet, probably. No, we we haven't we haven't got much equipment. We've got a couple of little bits, but surprise for you, you wanted a Deutzfahr, and we were having a look at little uh, different Deutzfars. You had an eight, didn't you? Was it an eight you had in the uh, last one? Yeah, I had a monster Deutzfahr in yeah. the last one. And I said it will probably be a little bit too big, so we've gone for a uh, six, which is round here. If you follow me round, well, round here in the garage, we've got you um, an eight warrior just in here. Hold on. I'm having trouble with my legs again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you just gone in the garage? No, no, I'm round here. Oh, okay. Come back out again. Where are you? Yeah. Here. Come Sorry. round here. It's all right. You went really too fast, Mr. City P. You're too excited. I am. Come on. Let's go. I'm coming. <laughs> this is like when we go up into London. If we go into London, into the big smoke, Mrs. Silly P gets distracted by everything around her and she just spends ages wandering around and dithering and looking all over the place like a small child. Here we go, over here, this is yours. This is my tractor. That's Look, yours. Look guys, it's my new Deutz farm. Hooray! Yeah. Am I allowed to start the engine? I think I can get in this one. Yes, I can. So yeah, I'm in with you. But... Of course you can start the engine, it's yours. So... What we're going to do, be careful, there's a man walking behind you. Don't don't reverse out now. Right, you can back oh, up. You're really good at all this looking around. I just... I mean, it doesn't... I know it doesn't matter. I know you were freaking out about the deer the other day and stuff like that. Right, if you just stop there, I'm going to hop out because we need to... I'm going to explain something. Um, what I have done, I have... As I did in the last um, episode on Purbeck and the one before, I've taken the liberty of taking on a couple of contracts. We've got two baling contracts. We've got one for doing hay bales and one for doing silage bales. I've borrowed the equipment for both. Now, this is another lesson to learn for contract work. Um, what you can do, and it's a little bit, I know you like this word, it's a little bit nefarious. Um, <laughs> unless you've got a, a two contracts that are both the same farmer, which is probably okay, what you can do is you can borrow one set of equipment from one contract and if you need the same equipment for another contract, you can take on that contract without borrowing more equipment. So you can use contract equipment on other contracts as long as it's contract equipment. So I've got both sets of equipment and we can mix and match what we want to use because we have got small mowers over here with this Valtra, this, this mower set up, then over here we've got the Krona Big M450. Um, so we could mow with this, we could ted with it, but you know, there's both of us, we can do a whole lot of stuff. So what I was going to do was, I was going to grab probably... Well, I suppose I should really mow... We'll leave the Big M, we'll, we'll, we'll mow properly the first time round. I'm going to grab this little Valtra. I'm going to grab the mowing rig for this and you can follow me down. Um, actually, what you could do is you could grab the... Chop is that big M windrose as well, which we're not going to be able to do. Um, 
if you could grab the windrow and bring that down with you, that would be amazing. Actually, you could probably bring two bits of equipment down, and I'll explain how. Again, uh, being efficient and whatnot is always very helpful. So what we're going to need, I've got the mowers, so we'll mow, then we'll need to... I think the first one we're going to do is silage work, so we won't need to ted it to make hay. But this one here that I've got I'm shining my torch on, you see this one here? That's do you know what? I was just watching you from a distance thinking, why are all those pieces of equipment lighting up? You yeah. have a torch. It's like, it's like when you're teaching, isn't it? You have a pointer. Yeah. But you, I mean, you've got one as well. If you, get out your, if you get out of your vehicle and you go R1 and circle, you've got a torch. So you can put your torch oh, on. Okay. So this one here on the end, this is a Krona Swadro. That's a wind rower. Now what you can do to carry more stuff down is you can put that on your front three-point link. So if you drive towards that with your front three-point link, so we've just turned towards that now. I'm coming out this way onto the main road, so you need to Are come you out. you going to go right and pass no, me? No, you need to go left. You need to come out and go left. Doesn't matter if you swing out across the road, you should be all right. There you go. Swing out and left. That's Woo! it. You can back up a little bit if you want to, or just kill that man with the uh, with Do you the wind, get elf plates or tractors? With the wind rower, which they should have, shouldn't they? <laughs> right, don't go too fast because we're going to turn down this side turn and this traffic's going to stop, isn't it? No, it's turning down there, right. So we're turning down here. Hold on a second, I'm just realigning myself. Also, bear in mind you have got um, stuff on the front, so when you turn in... What do you mean realigning yourself? You're realigning you? your chakras. <laughs> No, no, no. I drive from outside of the, the tractor, sir, but I need to be far enough back that I can see what's in front of me. Oh, Have you okay. just gone down this right-hand turn? Uh, a little Between bit further along. No, no, a bit further along. There's an actual road. That's a little lane, narrow lane. Nice and gentle. Remember, I've, I've said as well, you don't have any leeway on this one. The hedges have collisions, so you can't drive through hedges. You will just hit them and you'll get stuck. And these are quite narrow, so this is this is a baptism of fire for you. Um, whereas most people will probably learn on a much wider open map to make life a little bit easier for you. No such luck. <laughs> You're doing right. Follow me down. Right, we're going to turn right down here to our farm. Now the farm's a little bit tricky to get into because it's quite a narrow entryway. So we might have to swing in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open my map here because we need to get to field 89. I'm trying to work out how we get to field 89. Um, field 89 is not this side, it's this side. So I'll be in through there. That's 89. Okay, so we're going to need to go. You're right up behind me. Almost, yes. Cool. Hang on, let me get a little bit closer before you go off. I'm not, going, see I'm, where you go. I'm not going anywhere yet. Okay. What we're going to do is... is... driving away. No, I'm, <laughs> I haven't left you, have I? I'm just here. There you go, look. You're hitting the walls and stuff and bouncing that trailer behind. Right, so what you want to do is go a little bit... We're going to go right here into this field to leave our equipment and then we're going to go into our farm. So we need to swing past a little bit. Remember you've got that stuff on the front and then turn in. I'm hoping this is going to go through this gateway. Otherwise, the equipment would be... Oh, no, that's right. We're okay. So what we're going to do, because we need to go into the next field over, I'm going to leave the equipment in this field for the time being. So I'm going to stop there. If you come in as well. That's it. Gently, gently. Don't oversteer. That's it. Perfect. Brilliant stuff. In you come. And then just pull up next to the tractor there. So we've got some of the equipment we're going to need for starting off our um, bailing contract. But what we're going to do now... Let's go into the farm. Oh, that Deutschfahr sounds amazing. All right, so you want to stop your engine? Hop out. Oh, I've left my beacons going. Oh, I don't think I even put mine on. Oops. No, that's all right. Doesn't matter. Right, follow me through. Let's go to the farm. Let's have a look. Hello. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> it requires a lot uh, of thought. <laughs> do, I need, do I need to hold your hand? Shall we go? We're good. Right. So, Here I come. just across the lane, watching out for traffic. He says, just about to run out in front of a car. Brilliant. Right. I do this all the time. This is our farm. 
so unlike the last one on Purbeck where we had separate bank accounts and separate farms, we've combined. So we've got the, the Sealy Peas and then there's the McConnons. My Land Rover, which we've arrived in. My Land Rover is just over here. This is our farmhouse. We do have a dog. He's about somewhere. Actually, because you're part of the farm now, you should be able to come over to the, the bowl. And if you come over and, and point down towards the bowl, it should give you the option to fill the bowl. If you come right over here to the where the dog handle is, if you come to the bowl and just point down towards it, it should say L3 fill bowl. It says Sparky. L3 fill bowl. Yeah. So the dog should appear. You press L3. L3 down on the left mushroom. Left controller, mm -hmm. joystick. There you go. So the dog should appear at some point. Somewhere. Now, let's go and have a look at the yard. Like I said, we haven't got very much. We haven't got any animals. We haven't got anything at all yet. So we'll start off with bees and then we'll... Um, I'm not sure where the dog is. Should come bounding around. If it's like Darwin, he will be right here when the food that comes. That was. I, I keep wanting to try. I changed the kennel name. The kennel. We changed it to Lucky, actually. Oh, here he comes. Look. There he is, farm dog. Yeah. <laughs> and Darwin has just looked up at me like, "What yeah. do you want, Mum?" Yeah. What? <laughs> right. What? So if we come into the yard. Now again, like Purbeck, you said you wanted a, like a proper old farmyard, so that's what we've got. We haven't got much stuff. We have got a little baler. I say a little baler. We've got a Vermeer baler around the back. Um, and then we've got, uh, I mean, a, a Ford, technically. We've got a little lizard tractor. We've got a trailer. And I think we've got a water tank. And that's it. We've got a silage clamp. We've got a slurry pit. We've got a silo. We've got a cow we bum. We, room for cows, yeah. We, yeah, we've got no cows in it. We own the field behind us. The field just here is ours just in here which actually we can mow i'm just thinking moving forward we're going to need grass and stuff what i was going to suggest not in this episode but what i want to do because they're new on this map i want to get goats i want to do a goat pen and because the goats produce goat milk and then what we right. can do the mcconnons up the road have got cows when their cows calve i thought we could buy the calves put them yes, into our it. put them into ours and the calves require milk so if we can get the goats going really quickly and we can get some grass cut so we can feed them um we can build up a stock of milk to then be able to feed the calves when we get calves but that's gonna be a little bit further Where down the lane cows goat milk uh well in here you can i tried it when i was doing my testing okay. um because i didn't know if it was going to work but what what's happening in game is the same as when you do sh there are sheep um mods where you can do wool but there are ones we can do sheep's milk but when it's produced i think they do actually separate out and it says sheep's milk but you can use the milk generically i mean generally speaking it kind of works pretty well okay so this is this is our farm now what you wanted to do was bees didn't you i do where will be best the best place of bees not too close to the house obviously. um well i mean to be fair we could put them in the back garden of the house if you wanted to um, they need to be new wildflowers, don't they? Lots of wildflowers. Well, the trees. good thing is, in game as well, when you place bees and beehives, when you put the beehives down, they will add a bonus pollination to certain crop types if you put them close oh, enough to a field. Okay. Um, but when, well, I mean, to be fair, we're just going to put them in for the honey. If you follow me, we'll go around to the back. But what I'm also going to do, so two new things you're going to be learning today. Well, you're going to be learning a whole lot of stuff today. We're going to do. Um, I'm going to show you the wardrobe. Um, option so because you want to put beekeeping gear on. Oh, I uh, need beekeeping gear. Yeah, yes. and then we're also going to look at the build mode um, for placing objects which you haven't done yet. So, for doing beehives, you're going to need to know that. I'm just thinking round behind the house here because we own this bit of land, we could put some small beehives in here. That'd be right, wouldn't it? Whereabouts are you behind the garden? No, I've just, I've just no, here, just came through the gap into the back garden. Because I've put you your, on as a farm manager as well, so I just thought in the back garden here we could put some small ones. I normally use the big, there's what they call a Langstroth, and it's a 33 hive um, one, but it's a bit big. And I just think if you want to have a go at just doing some bees, we can put some smaller ones in. So first yeah. things first then, I'll show you the wardrobe option. So what you want to do, um, the, the big paddle in the middle of your controller, if you mm -hmm. press that, that will bring you yep. onto your... Um, brands vehicles tools so your vehicle menu for buying and selling and stuff if you keep going down with r1 until you get all the way down to the bottom and it should come up with others 
others. Animal dealer wardrobe. And then wardrobe. So if you click on wardrobe now. There are certain mods and certain houses. Our farmhouse doesn't have a wardrobe trigger, but certain mods, certain buildings, certain maps do have a wardrobe trigger on the map as well. So this is a way of getting into the wardrobe menu without having to have a trigger. Oh, you've done it already. I can already see you've changed. You did hang about, did you? I this is City Peace wants to keep bees. Um, is there an, actually, I was going to check that. Is there an option for the beekeeping to change the colour of the beekeeping outfit? Yeah, you can change the colour of it. You don't have to have it white. I thought all beekeepers' outfits were white. Well, yeah, but I think it just gives you the option. Because if it's got a little paint can thing in the top right-hand corner of the suit, it does mean you can change the colour of it. So if you don't want it to How be white... If you go back into the wardrobe... Yeah, I'm in there, and I'm in the you, You're on the, the beekeeping suit. If you yeah. press triangle, bo at the bottom of the screen, it will say confirm, select, oh. or select colour. So if you select colour, you can then change it to whatever colour you want. I've got a funny feeling you're going to go for orange, but... <laughs> you know me so well. Uh, of course. Oh. Have you tabbed? Oh, I have. Sorry. Of course you have. I'll be back in a moment. Back in the GIF. What? There's lots of places to tab to. I know, because the McConnons have got a load of equipment and machinery as well, so there you go. I don't seem to be able to get to the garden. Can't oh, you tab? If you tab to my Land Rover, you should be able to get out of the Land Rover. Right here, there you go. So if you just, just press, there you go. Hello there. There you go, looking very Ooh. swish. Come on then, let's go. And I'll show you the build mode and how to put some hives in. So where are we going? Back round to the garden. Back round to the garden. I don't know how you take so long to go everywhere. I why walk, did, you why, run. I don't why, know, why why how do you, you come? Run? Uh, if you push forward to walk and then you go R2, so the bottom shoulder button. So oh, as you're pushing that's... forward in R2, you can run. There Ooh. you go. Okay, right. You probably want to back up a I little bit. Because you, you'll be in the way of what we're doing. Right, now. Build mode, Mr. City P. Yes, Mr. You're about City to P. learn something new. So if you press L1, shoulder button, and then that main paddle in the middle. L1. L1 and the paddle. It comes yep. up with a screen, and it should say buildings, production, animals, decoration. You got all of that? Oh, buildings, production, animals, right. yes. So what you want to do now is using your D-pad, yep. go, go across until you get to animals. Yep. Now this menu, you can go up and down on the D-pad. You can go in, so that main first menu, you've got buildings, production, animals, decoration, landscaping. We won't get into landscaping yet. Below that, it says sheds, silos. So on each one you click on, it will give you another set of options. And this is where you can, anything you've downloaded, any building, any decorative objects, any fencing, hedges, anything at all, productions, factories, this is how you place them. This is how you put them onto the map. And then later on, we'll, at some point, we can move on to looking at decoration and adding trees and textures. And But that's a whole, I mean, that's a whole other thing. So if you scroll across to get to animals and then press X. Yep. And then go down on your D-pad once. And then go across until you get to bees. Bees. Oh. Have you placed one? I didn't mean to do that. How do I go back? We can demolish it. It's not a problem. Um, so you click on bees and then you scroll across. It's only when you scroll across to the one you want that you then place the one you want. And we can leave that one there if you want to. It's not a problem. Um, that's a beehive one Langstroth. And if you scroll across all those different hives, you've got a four hive, you've got a elongated single, you've got a ten beehive, or you've got a thirty-three. Um, so it depends how many. Obviously, the price goes up the more hives they have. So it depends right. what you want to place. But what you have to have is um, a place for the honey pallets to spawn. So if you scroll across from all of those to the very end it says beehive honey pallet location yeah if you click on that press just press x once yeah it then will give you the option to move it around using your joystick to wherever you want to place it which obviously i can't see at the moment how do i zoom in to the map or to the game from this menu because i can't see um where well, it is. zooming out is um l2 zooming in is R2, but that that's as close as you'll get. Um, it depends, of course, as well, where... Have you got your... Um... 
options open for all the icons. Can you see all the blue icons on the map and that kind of stuff? Have you got that on? No. Right, oh. I want to put that... That's where I want to put my pallets, under the tree. So do I just press X? If it's allowing you to, just press X and it should place it. I'm not sure where oh, under the tree you are. It's with another option. Oh, okay. So I know you can, you can do something about that. Um, okay. If we go to place that, I'll go to animals and I'll go across to bees. And then out in the end. When you go to oh, place it's right. it... No, I've just moved it. It's okay. Well, what you can do, if you've got the help window open, it does give the option. Okay, so where have you put it? Right behind you. Oh, cool. Right, so at the moment, can you see any hazard markings on that or just a plain piece, piece of ground? It's got um, hazard markings on each of the corners. All oh, right, okay, so you've got your options on. That's all, that's all right. Right, so that beehive you already placed, if you come around to the side where I am, you can see the bees coming out of it and you can hear them if you get close to it. I haven't got a beekeeper. Do I need to on. come out of this menu? Yeah, you can come out of the menu. We'll go back in, in a minute, it's not a problem. How do I come out? Just press circle. Come all the way out. Right, so if you come around to this side, you can see the bees coming out of it. You've tapped ah. again. Will you stop tapping? You <laughs> would be mad. It's really hard to to switch between the um, using the joysticks and the D-pad because all other games I've ever played, the uh, D-pad is the movement one. You, can't, you coming back? <laughs> I am coming back. Uh, there we go. Right. So if you come and look at here, the front of it, you can see the bees coming out. I can see the bees, yes. Right. And when you get closer, you can hear them as well. Now, what I would say is, I mean, it doesn't matter because they're going out into the countryside. But if we go back into the build mode, you can rotate any item as well to place it in a certain direction. So we're probably going to want to add in more beehives because that, okay. one, that one beehive will take ages to produce any honey at all. So what you want to do is go back into the build mode, so L1 and the, and the main pad, to go back into build mode. Yep. Go back to your animals, back to bees. Um, I would suggest putting in, if you scroll across until you get to the one that says um, Beehive 10 Langstroth Hives. Yes, got that right. one. If you press X, it will put it out in front of you, but don't press X again yet. Okay. Right, so when you've got it like that, if you do left shoulder or right shoulder, you can rotate it. You're rotating it, your one? Yeah. Right, yes. so what you want to do then is rotate it and then place it in a position. It may come up with overlaps and you just move it until it doesn't. So you can then place it pointing in the direction. Those coloured bits are where the bees are going to come out of. So whichever direction you want the bees to come out, whether it's into the garden or out of the garden, that's entirely up to you, it doesn't matter. And then when you're happy with the location you want to place it, then you press X and it'll place it. I'll get out of the way though. Just wondering where to put it. I mean, How do I move it? Uh, you can move it with the D-pad. Uh, not the D-pad, oh, the, the left stick. Um, if I go to it. Yeah, so you'd, with your left stick, you can move it anywhere you want. And then with L1 and R1, you can rotate it. So moving it around with the left stick and then L1, R1. Then when you're happy with the placement, you just press X to place it. If it was me, I'd put it up in this corner. But they're your beehives, you can place them wherever you want. It's your farm too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you've got a single one and you've got a ten beehive. How Happy do I with come that? Out of the, the uh, menu, circle, sorry? just press circle. There we go. Yes, so you come I am back very out happy. Again. Okay. Yes, I was just admiring my beehives. Awesome. Actually, I think I'd like to turn they're pointing in opposite directions, aren't they? Yeah, well, you, you can't. You, well, what, what you can do, if you want to, you can remove them. So you demolish, what they call demolish it. You can remove it and then you can replace it. But when you do demolish something, you only get half the value back. So you just have oh, to be I careful. What I normally suggest, if you're learning to play stuff, if you're going to do landscaping or anything like that, I always suggest to people to have a test map. Just pick any map, doesn't matter what it is. Have a test map and then have a play around with the build mode. And on the test map, it doesn't matter. You can put some money in, you can have a play around with it. But if you're actually on your Let's Play map, I always suggest to save the game first, 
place whatever you're going to place or do any landscape. And if you make a mistake, you can come back out of the game without saving, come back uh. on the previous save. You've tabbed again. Would you stop tabbing? You keep it's vanishing. It's what do I tab it into to come back? <laughs> uh, if you tab back to the to the Land Rover, um, I'm then... so sorry. No, that's why it doesn't matter. It's... What I'm going to need to do is put uh, a little note here that says "Don't use the D-pad," and then I would be. Yeah, I'm over here. All right. Hello. <laughs> right, so so you've learned a couple of things now. You've you've gone into wardrobe. You've changed your wardrobe to the beekeeping outfit. You've had I a look have. into the build mode. Very just scratching the surface of the build mode, but you've placed something. You've had a bit of a go with a couple of controls on that. I want to show you something else now. On certain maps, there are collectibles. If you come down here, follow me. There's this little cart here, just around the other side of the cart. If you have a look, come come past. You won't see it until you come past. Turn around and look towards the cart. See that? It's a little sheep. Right. If you go over to that little sheep and then press L3, if you go right up to it. Is it L3? I'm sure it's L3. So you're given the option to collect it. You might have to back up a little bit. You're standing on the cart. There you go. I so found you get, a sheep. There yeah, so no if you go around. Sheep. Yeah, so there'll be um, selections of them. There's another one around the back. Spoiler alert to anyone who's playing this map. There's one on the slide as well, but it's not a sheep, it's a cow. So there are whole sets of these, and when you collect full sets, you get bonuses. So it's a thousand for each one. On some maps, it's game cartridges. They're normally worth a bit more. On some maps, it's cheese. And yeah, There's all different things to collect. So you come a game around, cartridge? You know, like the old cartridges you just put into the Ataris. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. it was something to do with this game. No. On, so on a map like this, you might have 100 toys to collect. Some maps, there are only 20 collectibles. They're normally the cartridges, and they're normally worth about 50 grand each one, if you can find them. There you go. So you've, you've made yourself a couple of grand just for collecting some toys. So that's collectibles. We've covered another thing. <laughs> collectibles? Uh, do all maps have collectibles? Or no, not some... all of them. Are you going to keep your beekeeping gear on? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's all right. I'm just asking. I am. A beekeeper. I need um, to be prepared. I guess what I need to do is take a thumbnail uh, of you probably in your beekeeping gear because you said in the last episode so you wanted to. If you come over and stand over, if you come and stand by your can hives. I stand by the hives. Let's take a photo. Should we take an ussy? Don't you di stop. Stop with that nonsense. Yeah, if you come and stand over here where I'm standing and face towards me, that way I can get the hives in and you. That's it. Perfect. Turn to face me. That's absolutely spot on. I've just got to realize I've got that open. Oh, the dog's wandering as well. Come a little bit closer and get that as well. I hope the bees don't sting the dog. I'm sure it'll be fine. There we go. Right, okay. I mean, we might use that. We might not. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to turn my torch off. Right. So, that's those things done. Onwards. Let's get some, uh, let's get some bailing work done. We're already half an hour in, Mrs. Silly P, so we have to get cracking on this. I do like the, the slower pace, like I said in the last episode, I do like the slower pace of this, that we're not Where jumping. I've come down the little lane to the main entrance oh. so we can get back out into the field and grab the stuff. Uh, we'll have to drop a couple of bits off now. The question's going to be, do you want to have a go at mowing? Or yes, do you please. want to do windrowing? Or what do you want to do? I'd like to mow, if that's OK. OK, well, the mower is on the rig that I was driving, so oh, the, okay. the voucher, that's fine, that's not a problem, because it's, it's, it's our farm, it's our contract, so you should be absolutely fine. Um, so if you jump into the voucher, right, so you're going to want to, um, the field we're going to be going into is through this gateway here, and this is the field we're going to mow. Now, again, just be aware, remember, that um, the hedges have collisions, so you're not going to get away with... Um, going all over the place so if you do drive do I need to take the stuff off the back no 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 because that's a mower as well uh, what I would suggest oh. you do if you swing out over to where I'm standing now and then swing around so you're coming straight on at the gate because if you come across directly from where you are now you won't get into the tight angle of the gate it's all about angles so if you come over to where I am that's it come towards me and then when you get over towards me, that's it. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And then turn around this way, follow me down, and then in through the gateway. 
That's it. Straighten up and come through the gateway. Now what you're going to want to do, as soon as you come in the gateway, because you want to start mowing, as you come through the gateway, mind that post, no, right, stop there, you want to unfold that front mower. So remember what I said about changing from your tractor to your implements? You want to press, press triangle until you've got the front implement highlighted. Yep. And then it should give you the option, if you've got your options, uh, your menu open to unfold. So is it L1? It'll be unfold. There you go. Now you want to turn that on and lower it. Do you turn it on first or lower it first? Um, I would turn it on first, then lower it. It doesn't matter, you can do it either. Then lower it. And as you drive forward, you will start mowing with the front mower. So drive forward because you want to get the back mower through the gateway. That's it, keep coming. The grass on here is so long, it's brilliant. Straighten up a bit because you're going to hit the hedge. So turn Am to I the left. left or right ultimately left. here? Uh, you want to come straight up the field, so I'll go left a little bit to see you kind straighten up towards That's it, come forward. That's it. Turn left, 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 left a little bit. So you want to straighten up. That's it. Now come straight. Right. So as you come through the gateway with the rear mower, you want to unfold that rear mower. I need to do that again. So you, so you press triangle so you get to the rear implement. See, this is the problem. I'm really worried that because I'm talking and not actually in a piece of machinery, I should have got the wrong side, isn't it? Um... Has, have you got the option on there, is under R1, to, to change the direction of that mower? No. Should give the option to swing the mower the other way, but maybe not. Right, so what you're going to want to do then, is you're going to want to come out at an angle to the left, because that mower is going to want to come around behind you. Um, so if you turn to your left a little bit and come out, if you drive forward, you, if you turn the rear mower on, Yep. And you've lowered it. Yep. Right, so you want to come out a little bit further. I think you might have got caught in the fence post, haven't you? Yep. If you fold it back up, oh, there you go, just drag it through, go on. Keep going, keep going. Now straighten up, now straighten up. And if you look behind you, if you're in cab, or if you're out of cab, you should be able to see now that you are mowing at the yep. front and at the rear. Yep. And what you want to do now is go around the field and mow everything you possibly can in the field. And hopefully, where possible, avoid leaving any gaps, but any gaps or any tufts you leave, we'll just go back over later on. Now, don't go, don't put your tractor in too close to the hedge, because you've got to remember this mower behind you is swinging out. So you need to allow probably the tractor's width. There you go, that's a bit better. So allow a tractor's width. And you should be able to mow both. There you go. If you're turning in again, try and keep it. I'm That's just it. trying to get to the edge of the field. That's all right. It's cool. Yeah. It'll, yeah. It'll mow more. It'll be better that way. And then, yeah, just go around the outside first. Once you've done the outside, it gets a little bit easier because then you can just mow up and down and round and round and that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab your tractor and I'm going to grab the wind rower. Um, right. It's now saying this vehicle tool is reserved for contract work. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. It might be you just went outside the field edge a little bit. I don't know how it would have done that, but that's a bit peculiar. Yeah, I think you just got caught on the edge of the field. There you go. Okay, keep going. That will happen if it doesn't... Yeah, it's not allowing you to mow up that corner. I wonder, wonder why. It's all part of the field. Oh, cool beans. Sometimes what will happen is if you come back around the field the other way, it will allow you then to cut it. I don't know why it does it. Try to remember to keep that width out, because I think you just keep getting clonked. This is going to be an interesting one, getting through that gap. Okay, that's so bad. Brilliant stuff, right. I'm going to go and grab the... Do you just want me to carry on mowing the yeah, field, Yeah, you just mow round, unless you want to have a go right, at wind I rowing. I have a question. No, yes. I have a question. Why is there a mower on the front and the back? Oh, is the back surely not just going over the bit that's been mowed already? No, because the mower behind you is swung out behind. Your front mower uh -huh. is directly in front of the tractor in a certain width. The rear mower comes out to the side, so it gives you a, sort of a double width mowing, if not a little bit more than a double width. Some mowers do that. That's, um, I think they call it a swing over. It's a swing over mower, so you can actually adjust the angle of that rear mower, but for the time being, we'll leave it as it is. We don't want to um, overcomplicate stuff. We'll just leave it as it is for the time being. Okay. Any bits you've missed, if you go over, because what I want to do is come in and do the wind rowing behind you. Another beauty of having another person on the map with you when you're playing multiplayer 
is normally you would do all these jobs on your own. Do you remember you came in the other day and I was on Carpathian Countryside and I was doing mowing with it and I said it's the ultimate baling pack and I was yeah. mowing, wind rowing, baling and wrapping all in one pass. With that Baby, pack, yes. right. So what we're doing here, we're doing each of those operations separately. This is quite a small wind row. <laughs> what I'm going to do is go... Yeah, because we're going to need to get a little bit closer to the hedges here, because what we were trying to... What we're going to try to do here is maximise... What's the other way? We're going to try and maximise the amount of grass we cut. The more grass we cut, the more bales we get, the quicker we... Or the quicker, the easier we create... Create? Complete the contract. But the beauty of that is normally you get bales left over so you complete the contract and we'll have some bales that we could potentially keep which would come in handy for making things like feed and feeding animals and that kind of stuff so i'm just going to kind of wind roll on behind you and just make sure we've got um yeah it doesn't like this corner does it nope. so i think what you might just do is, is mow maybe the other direction once Right, you need to go right around the edges of the field unless you want me to mop those up at some point because we need to, like I say, cut as much of this grass as we possibly can. But we are now doing a moat, yeah. See, it doesn't like the, the corners at all. We're not going to get many bales off this field, but it's just it's more about doing the contract and having a bit of a play around with the equipment, really. And that's the thing as well to, to, um, to kind of, when you're starting out, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It doesn't matter if you get things wrong. It's about having a play with the stuff that's available and just getting used to the machinery, the equipment, that getting used to um, your various different options and changing yeah. from tool to tool and raising and lowering. Like I said, all, all the stuff the other day, that when you're thousands of hours in, you take for granted. It's just about playing, just getting used to it and having a bit of fun. No need to get bent out of shape or worried about it. Just Right, so if you look behind you, you'll see a lot of bits you've missed, a lot of gaps. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go back and get them. So I'll just, I'll just windrow up some bits and then... Um, any bits that you've missed when you cut those I'll just go back and windrow those in but this is a fairly small windrower actually I, I think the thing is with the that big you know that that big crone machine that was up at the store I said we do it this way first that one will cut and windrow at the same time Let's turn that off. I'll come back the other way I say it's not pretty but it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be So what I want to do, hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll have this field cut, and we'll have it windrowed, and hopefully bailed. I'm um, just thinking time-wise. I don't know if we'll get onto the wrapping. We might have to do the wrapping in the next episode. Is that going to be in the way? It is. That's going to be interesting. Yep, doesn't like that. Okay. Sometimes they have collisions on, sometimes they don't, but that telegraph pole definitely has a collision. <laughs> yes. It's going to be interesting for Bailey, I don't know that much. If I can get that to go over a little bit further. There we go, that's better. Get out of your way. Have you raised either of your... No, they're both your mowing, aren't they? Yeah. Now what you can do, if you find, or if you're finding that having that rear mower on there is too unwieldy, if you're finding it's difficult or you want to get into the corners of the map, what you can do is detach that rear mower and just use the front mower. 
when you get to a point where you know obviously you want to you want to mow as much of the of the field as you can in one go so having both mowers attached that one is a side mower um, but you also get setups where you have what's called a butterfly mower so you have a mower that goes in the back on the three-point link and it opens out either side so you've got the one on the front and then you've got technically two small mowers on the back that open up um, so yeah I mean, there's all different ways around it what I would suggest you do if you turn around when you've done that bit and come back the other way around the field and then you can catch all of these bits here in this corner with your front mower down where I'm standing but we can get to that later on yeah, I'm not sure about that corner we might have to go the other way around on that one no it might it might do if you go the other way around the field it might do I don't know Oh, so we're not going to get a huge amount of bales, but... She'll be leaked. There you go. So in a, in a few episodes, you've done ploughing, you've done harvesting, you've done delivery of harvesting, you're doing mowing, so far, harvesting is my favourite. Really? I found that so therapeutic yesterday. Will you wait till we get onto things like potato harvesting, sugar beet harvesting, and things like that? That's quite cool. Yep, doesn't want to do any of that. Good stuff, hun. I'm just doing a bit of tidying up over here in the corner. Makes you into a perfectionist, doesn't it? Yeah, it depends how yeah how OCD you want to get. And the thing is, the more grass you can cut, the more bales you can make, and potentially the more you have left over. So you you end up gaining from it. It benefits you to do it. Um, as long as you complete the contract, it, it doesn't matter too much. I know there'll be people going mad at that, that statement, but it's not the end of the world. What you might find is you'll get to the end of a contract um, and you haven't delivered enough, and then you have to go back to the field and think, okay, there's got to be more grass I can cut here because something's gone wrong. You know, there should be more I should be able to cut here. I'm coming at this corner from the other way now. Yeah, try it the other way and see if it allows you to cut it. You need to go right over because there's a load of grass over here that you haven't done. So is it allowing you to cut? not no no it's, yeah for some reason it doesn't like that corner does it well fingers crossed we've got enough with what, what we have so what we're going to do now um we're going to carry on just mowing this i'm going to windrow it up and then we'll see you in a minute when we start bailing i'm probably going to whiz up and get the wrapper and we'll try and get some of these wrapped by the end of the episode because when we did this yesterday we had recorded way too much and i had to edit a load out so we'll see if we can get this a little bit uh bit neater so we'll see you all in a bit so miss silly pea Bailing! You're in the Bailey. baler. There's all different sorts of balers. Um, there's baler, baler wrappers, there's square balers, round balers, all sorts of stuff. Um, you're in a round baler. It's set at the moment, I think it's set standard to 125 centimetre bales, which is the smallest bale size. I would leave it at that because we haven't got a lot of grass here. And the problem you've got is you want, you might get to a point where you could eke out an extra bale. But if you've got it set on the bale size too big, it won't right. eke out any extra bales. So we'll leave it on the smallest size, but you'll notice if you go into your help menu, is it under L1, it will say turn on automatic drop? Yes. Right. If you turn that on, as you go round, it will automatically put the bales out the back. You don't ah. have to. But what you've got to make sure you do is when that baler gets full and you should hear a beeping, you need to stop. It will unload so automatically for you. If you keep going, it won't keep picking up any grass because the baler's full. So, if you, oh, you've already got it turned on and lowered. Oh, you're way ahead of me. So what you should do now, so as you start going over the windrows that I've been doing, it should start picking it all up. And you should start filling up your baler. And then when it gets full, 
it will but like I say once you hear that beeping you need to keep an Just eye out stop. down the bottom right as well it will show you when you get into almost full um, and then it'll be a case of we'll go around and we'll mop up any bits we miss so you are now bailing there you go straight away and what we're going to, have to do is come back um, because we need to wrap these so I'm going to, need to go and get the wrapper in a moment as well but so it didn't give you a baler that wraps at the same no, time? No, no, it just, it just gave us the baler and a wrapper. And then the other contract we got is for doing hay bales, so you won't get a wrapper for that anyway. We just need to ted on that one and then bale. So all I'm going to do is try and get these, the rest of this wind road. And you'll need to go, like I say, there'll be bits you've missed. We'll just need to go and mop up to get as, as many bales as we possibly can is, is realistically what we're aiming for. And then hopefully it will only take a certain amount to complete the contract and then the left over we can keep. So you have to be careful as well when you're doing this. You don't complete the... If it says contract complete, don't accept the contract complete because anything that's left over you'll lose. So you just have to make sure you're just a little bit careful when you're, uh, when you're doing it. But you are now bailing as well, Mrs. Silly B. Look at this. You've done a whole load of stuff in this one. I am a farmer. I mean, yeah, like we said before, when you watch Clarkson's farm and the people in Chadlington getting all angry with him and saying, oh, you know, he's making this TV show, he's not a farmer. As soon as you start doing farming of any description, you're a farmer. You're, a farmer. you're, you're farming. I, I don't see what the, what the problem is. It's weird, isn't it? I guess their argument is you haven't been farming for a long period of time. There might have been people that have been farming for 30, 40, 50, 60 years of their lives, you know. Um, and I guess they assume he's just going to stop doing it as soon as the TV show ends. But he's loving it though. If you talk to him about it, yeah, it's um, the... like you said, it's it's a he's emotionally invested now. That's the thing. It's hard not to get emotionally invested, and especially like I said, when we were up there and, and we met Caleb and we were there at Diddley Squat, and you know, at the end of the first series and the second, where they sat looking out, and he, he got quite emotional looking out over the countryside, and he said, Ima imagine that this is your this is your office every day. It is such a beautiful place, and it's not that's not the only beautiful place in the world. There are so many beautiful places in the world. But, um, doing this as well as I usually do. <laughs> I've noticed. I've got I've got so used to using big equipment and one pass mowing, wind rowing and bailing. I've got out of uh, got out of the habit of doing it proper like. Just suddenly thought. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. I just had a sudden thought that the bale wrapper. No, I'm sure it wraps the small size bales. It doesn't do the large ones. I think it's that way round. I suddenly thought, oh no, have I made a mistake here? But I don't think I have. I'm gonna try and get right into this corner. that all out. How are you getting on? Any little bits you miss, we, we, like I said, we need to try and gather up absolutely everything we possibly can. bail a little bit just so I can windrow these little bits up. Just a little bit of a nudge out the way. Cool. You're doing a cracking job, hun. <laughs> You've gone very quiet, I can tell you're concentrating. I am. It's like the bit where you hoover it all up at the end, isn't it? <laughs> have, you got, have you got your tongue sticking out like when you're doing crayon? No, 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 not a man. Oh, okay. 
I love the randomness with which the bales are all over the fields. <laughs> That's all right. Look. I'm just going to move some of the bales out of the way so when you come back over to get the last bits of grass, you're not hitting bales. That's a good idea. Just makes life a little bit easier. So, we'll carry on doing this. I'm going to whiz up and probably get the bale wrapper. Um, and then I'll let Mrs. Silly P do a bit of bale wrapping. We'll probably, in the next episode, we'll collect them. Because as I said about contracts, this contract came with two bale handlers. And I really don't like using them. I think they're horrible. Um, but the other contract for doing hay bales has got an auto stack um, bale, a bale loader, bale handler which we'll use because that oh, I'm saying that it might be a bit too big let me just move that bale out of the way for you one second just give that a bit of a nudge there we go get out of your way oh. I don't want to look round so I won't no no I tabbed <laughs> you're very honest you're very honest you could <laughs> Could have kept that to yourself, but that's fine. Right, so yeah, no, we'll see in a bit. Why there was no one, no one in my tractor. <laughs> no, I didn't look round, so. Then she's tapped off to go and get cup <laughs> There we go, right. So it's just a case of mopping up now. I'm going to tell you what, we've got a lot more bells off this than I thought we were going to. Okay, Mrs. Silly P, I'm going to finish off. We've just had a conversation. I'm going to mop up the last bits of grass. We've got a few bales that are going to need to be wrapped. And I'm just, and again, I'm going to do it again. Always double check. Always double check. We're on field 89. Bale the grass, wrap it to make size bales. Perfect. So you've got the wrapper on the back. I went up to the store to get it. What you need to do is unfold that wrapper. Done. Are you unfolded, are you? So as you drive forward now, that should swing out to your side, to your right hand side. So if you drive forward, you should see it swing up behind you. And then what you want to do is position your tractor to the left of a bale. And get quite close to it, but to the left of the bale. And then the wrapper... Keep going. You want to get a little bit close to the bale, a little bit close to the bale. And that should pick that bale up. You might want to go a little bit closer to it. If you back up a little bit. Back up just a little bit. Right. Now straighten up towards the bale. You want to get a, you want to get closer to the bale because you want that wrapper to be right on it. Sometimes those those little grabs don't. Have you got the bale? Have you got the wrapper turned on? Oh, could we not? Uh, it says turn on automatic drop. Yeah, that'll just put them put them off the back. But um, is it blue? Top left hand corner of your page. Are you on the bale? Are you on the wrapper? And is it showing? Does it need to be turned on? I can't remember now, bale wrappers. They should be. It's detach, open worker menu, select mix tool, select camera, fold bale wrapper, turn on automatic drop, top and map view. Oh, okay. You might just need to get a little bit closer to it, that's all. You might just be a little bit too far away from the bale, possibly. It should pick it up automatically and start wrapping it. Let's try the next one along. Oh, no, I've given over it now. Oh, there we are. <laughs> there you go. Oh, by luck, the judgment. <laughs> there you go. So that, that will now wrap. It rotates it round. It will wrap. And if you've got automatic drop on, once it's finished wrapping, it will drop it off the back automatically. And you can move on to the next bale. You haven't got automatic drop turned on, have you? Oh, there you go. On to the next bale. You are now wrapping bales as well. You're making silage bales. They will ferment in the wrap. I don't think we've got enough out to have one more bale, but we'll see. I well, we might do. Yes, yeah, so you want to get much closer to them, so you want your, your wheels to be almost almost touching it when you go past. You're just not that too far out of the way. <laughs> you hit it with your wheels. It's just, it's just, again, it's just practice. It's just getting close to it, but not hitting it. So you want to try and straighten up as you come towards it and just go just to the side of it so your wheels almost brush it and then the wrapper behind should then be fine there you go should be right shouldn't it keep going forward that's it keep
keep going, keep going, keep going. Bingo. Bingo, bango. Yeah, we're not quite enough for another bale. Oh, that's annoying. If it allowed us to cut that corner of the field that it didn't allow us to cut, we would have had enough, but I don't think we will. Even if I go around and mop up any extras, I think we're pretty much done. And you can't unload partial bales, so... I'm sure we'll be fine. It's only 1,800 litres, there's a bit of leeway. So you're doing a cracking job, whoops. Mind the hedge. Brilliant stuff. I'm impressed, Dan. It's so cool. And it, again, it's just once you get the hang of it, once you, you know, once you work out where you need to position yourself and you get it right, you do it every time and away you go. You can carry on driving, so if you get out of that corner, when that unloads, it won't unload onto that horrible bit that it doesn't like. So you can, while that's wrapping, you can be driving down towards your next bale and lining yourself up, and it will automatically unload anyway. And that is where we find ourselves. Baling contracts, or silage baling contracts, here on field 89. Mrs. Silly P is wrapping. Next episode, we'll collect the bales off this one, and we'll take them to be sold, and we'll have a look at... I'll, I'll, talk Mississippi P through our options of what we can do with them then we'll whiz over to I think it's field 150 um, to do the hay baling over on that one so that'll be slightly different because we won't need to wrap those and obviously if you played the game for a while that's fine but I'm talking obviously to Mississippi P and anyone that's new and that kind of stuff so she can have a go at doing tedding and doing hay bales and then we'll probably we need to look at our own grass situation because we've got a few grass fields that I think we need to cut because if we are going to get goats and feed them we're going to need some feed which means we might need to lease some other equipment so we can pick up things and so there's a whole load a whole load of stuff we need to do um, but that's where I think we're going to leave this episode are you happy with everything oh, that's gone on going great guns here I'm loving it yeah happy with all the things you've done in this episode all the things you've oh, done yeah. new and can you change the colour of the bale wrap? Because when we go to the um, Lake District, we often see a lot of purple bales. You can on certain mods. You can, if you buy your own wrapper, um, you can choose your bale wrap. But because these bale wrappers um, were part of a contract, they were given to us oh, by okay. by the farmer, in inverted commas, um, we, had, we didn't get the option. Um, but if you get your you own can, one... If it's your own. Yeah, you can. There's normally, I think it's four, is it four or five main colours um, but then some modded ones, the, the list of colours is endless. Um, you can have so many, I say endless, obviously there's an end to the list, but you can do absolutely tons. But um, I, know, I think, yeah, I probably need to stop there, I guess. Um, I think this is the last bale. Yes! I finished. Happy? Very. Okay. I cannot recommend playing this game just too much. It, it's stressful when you first kind of start, but then you have to think about the fact that you actually get muscle memory and you know what you're doing. And I find it therapeutic and relaxing. So. And to be I fair, Mrs. Mrs. City P came in while I was setting all this up to say straight away, "Can we do another episode today?" And she's got the bug. She's she's getting that. She wants to play it more, and I love that. I think it's brilliant. I do. Shall I get out of the tractor? Say goodbye. Yeah, come over here where I am, and we can. Um, you remember, one foot in front of the other, it's called yes. walking. There we go. I'm over here. Hello. <laughs> over here. Ah! <laughs> there you are. What's the silly pee? Long time no see. <laughs> so, we are at the end of another episode. Miss Silly Pete in a beekeeping. You should have said alien. It's really peculiar. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We're enjoying playing it. If you are, and if you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be our guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.